This video is about measurement in the scientific laboratory. Now, in order to measure, we have to all agree on what units of measurement we are going to use. So, the particular system that's used in the scientific world are called SI units. That actually stands for something called System Internationale, which is French. And essentially means the metric system, okay? If you look in your book, uh, in chapter 2, you will see this table, it's page 32, it's figure 2.1, and it shows you the SI units and how they are defined. So quantity, quantity means the thing that the unit stands for, that the thing that the unit measures. So if the quantity is length, the standard SI unit is a meter. Its abbreviation is a lowercase m, and you'll notice it's defined by the speed of light. There used to be an actual physical meter in a vault somewhere, in France actually, but that isn't true anymore. They define most of these things by non-physical means because physical things actually can change. Now if the quantity is mass, we'll talk in class a little bit about what mass is, but mass is essentially, on Earth anyway, essentially weight. The standard SI unit for that is the kilogram, which is abbreviated kg. This one does actually have a thing in France that is the kilogram. Time is a quantity. The SI unit of time is the second. Again, they have a way of defining it that does not depend on a physical thing. Temperature, Kelvin is the scale. We'll talk more about that much later. Amount of substance is this thing called the mole, which we will also get into later, not right now. Electric current and luminous intensity we will not be doing in this class. That will be physics. So essentially, what we're talking about here in this class is the metric system. Let's look over here at this table, which is the next page, and it's table 2.2. .2. This is the metric system. And yes, you do have to memorize this. Not all of them. I'll pick out a few up here that you don't really need to know. Because here in science class, we're most talking about small things. So big ones we don't have to deal with. But you should know mega which has an abbreviation of a capital M. Now look at this exponential. This exponential is 10 to the 6th. 10 to the 6th means a 1 followed by 6 zeros, i.e. a million, okay? Now look at the way they're defining it. They're saying 1 mega meter, and it doesn't have to be meter, it could be anything, any metric prefix. But they're saying 1 mega meter is 1 times 10 to the 6th meters. In other words, 1 megameter is a million meters. So think about that. That guy, a megameter, is a really, really big thing. I need a lot of meters, and a meter is essentially a yard, if you want to think about it in those terms. I need a million meters to get up to a megameter. So the trick to memorizing the metric system is to remember which things are bigger and which things are smaller. It's not enough just to memorize 10 to the 6th. You've got to say, ah, this is bigger than the base unit. There's 10 to the 6th of that base unit in one mega base unit. Kilo, you should know. Kilo is a thousand. But again, bigger than the base unit. There are a thousand meters in a kilometer. That, those are really the only two of the big ones I want you to know. Now down here, the little ones, those you do need to know. Deci, that's 10 to the negative first, i.e. 0.1, 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. These guys down here are all smaller than the base unit. So you can say it this way, that 1 decimeter is 0.1 meters or, in fact, you could say that one meter 
is 10 decimeters. Okay, let me write that down for you. One meter is 10 decimeters. Those are two different ways of saying the same thing, that one decimeter is 0.1 meter, or one meter is 10 decimeters. Either way you want to remember it, it's the same way, but be consistent. Centi means a hundred or a hundredth. Okay, for every one centimeter, there's 0.01 meters. Or conversely, there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Now you understand that it doesn't have to be just meter. Could be seconds, could be grams, could be any kind of metric base unit. Milli is a thousand. 10 to the minus third is a thousandth. So one millimeter is a thousandth of a meter, or one meter is 1,000 millimeters. So millimeters are tiny things. Okay, millimeters are tiny things. Notice that thousand we had back up in kilo, but the thousand was next to the base unit. Here the thousand is next to the thing with the prefix. Okay, so be careful about that. Micro, take a look at the symbol for micro here. It's a Greek letter. It's a Greek letter M called a mu. If you want to find it on your computer, type an M in symbol font, and that will be micro. Okay, this is a million, 10 to the sixth. For every one micrometer, there's 10 to the negative sixth meters. Or conversely, for every one meter, there's 10 to the sixth micrometers. Nano, little n is the symbol, that's 10 to the negative ninth. So for every one nanometer, there's 10 to the negative ninth meters. Or conversely, for every one meter, there's 10 to the positive ninth nanometers. And last one I'm going to ask you to know is pico. Pico is 10 to the minus 12th. So one picometer is 10 to the minus 12th meters. Or conversely, one meter is 10 to the 12th picometers. Okay? That's the metric system. Those things you need to memorize. Next video, we'll talk about converting between different metric units.